Hello everyone, I'm Mayor Mark Jamison and welcome to the Sunshine Coast Council's 2023 State of the Region. From embracing a recycling revolution and preserving precious ecosystems, to introducing an action plan to address housing and homelessness, designing cooler homes and installing a world-leading bushfire detection system. 2023 was certainly a groundbreaking year. We're proud of bringing people together for award-winning events, creating safer and more accessible recreation and sporting facilities, enhancing our national and international reputation as the Sunshine Coast Biosphere, while supporting our economy, lifestyle and environment for future generations and even luring a business giant from New York. Join us as we take a moment to reflect on a whirlwind 12 months, the challenges we've overcome and achievements made as a council and a community. Before I continue, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the Sunshine Coast local government area, the Kabi Kabi peoples of the coastal plains and northern hinterland and the Yinnaburra peoples of the southern hinterland. May I also pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and indeed to all First Nations people. As many of you will already know, I've recently announced I will not be contesting the next election in March. This will be my final State of the Region address. This is a communication mechanism I introduced in 2012 when I was first elected Mayor and one I have delivered each year, including during the pandemic, as a means of keeping our community informed of what our Council has been delivering on our community's behalf. Serving the Sunshine Coast for the past 12 years has been an absolute privilege. There is little doubt that councils I have led have achieved some truly historic and groundbreaking milestones for our region. In fact, the Sunshine Coast today is markedly different from what it was when I was first elected as Mayor in 2012. Our region has a much stronger and resilient economy with a clear blueprint for its future, generating investment and employment opportunities that help to keep people employed closer to home. Importantly, what this does is allow our young people to make career choices that enable them to stay in our region. It also has helped to bring our average household incomes up from 22% below the state average in 2012 to being near par with the state average today. This has always been what I've regarded as the significant dividend for our community in building a stronger and more resilient economy. And that is why it has always been a key message in our regional economic development strategy. We have seen transformational investment in infrastructure that will well and truly set our Sunshine Coast up for the future. Like the $334 million expansion of our airport to provide our residents, tourists, local businesses, and the food and agribusiness industry with a direct international travel and export gateway at no cost to the rate payer for an asset that we still own. We've established a new city centre in Maroochydore, which is coming out of the ground and will continue to go from strength to strength. And we've secured our very own international broadband submarine cable network that connects the Sunshine Coast and Queensland directly to the world. Council has also invested around $2 billion in local community facilities, roads and other infrastructure to improve the functionality and livability of our communities. In that time, we've also well and truly carved out our reputation as a national leader in environmental sustainability and conservation initiatives. Today, our Sunshine Coast is a UNESCO biosphere, and under my leadership, our council has established and delivered nation-leading environmental programs and initiatives, like the establishment of a 15 megawatt solar farm at Valdora, making our council the first in mainland Australia to offset the entirety of its electricity consumption with energy from a renewable source. Our 5,000 hectare Blue Heart Partnership, which will help to preserve the Marichi River floodplain for its intended purposes as an important ecosystem and flood storage, while opening up new economic opportunities for landowners in blue carbon storage. Expanding our conservation estate to the largest council-owned protected area in southeast Queensland. Recognising the existence of climate emergency, but unlike others, we've also taken real action through measures like our zero net emissions plan and climate hazard adaptation strategy to better prepare and adapt our region to the impacts of a changing climate and hosting the largest land for wildlife program in the nation, thanks to the partnerships our council has forged with local landowners. Our council continues to focus on the needs of our community, including health and wellbeing, connectivity and prosperity, as we look to guide sustainable growth building confidence and pride in our region to help maintain this lifestyle we're famous for. We don't do this alone. There are so many selfless, talented, committed and inspirational people around us who add so much strength to our community and encourage us to be better and do better. 
Join me as we hear some of their stories and achievements from the year that has been and their hopes for the future of our great region. I've got a real passion for turtles and all things ocean. I love diving, I love surfing. Turtles are a real love for me. I um, love getting involved and sharing my passion with the community and talking and working with like-minded people. The Turtle Care program works alongside the Department of Environment and Science to monitor nesting turtles and their clutches along the Sunshine Coast. And we also protect those nests until they've completely incubated and the hatchlings have run to the ocean. Plastic in the ocean is detrimental to turtles. We have a lot of strandings here because of plastic ingestion and uh, if we can reduce that load, especially during school holidays when we have so many visitors here on the coast, that would go a long way to looking after these beautiful animals. Last season, we satellite tagged two turtles. It was super important. We want to see where these turtles go once they've finished nesting. And one of them still has its sat tag on it from last season. And it is at New Guinea, believe it or not. It's come a long way to nest on our beaches. So you must really love the Sunshine Coast. And the other turtle we tagged is from Morton Island. So it's, uh, it's really interesting and important for our collection of data to know where these turtles go and what they're doing outside of the season. The Sunshine Coast Marine Turtle Conservation Plan includes extensive input from the region's turtle champions and outlines Council's plan for the recovery of marine turtle populations on our Sunshine Coast. To do this, it will take steps to reduce threats to marine turtles such as light pollution and strengthen support of the dedicated community volunteer programs Turtle Care Sunshine Coast and Coolum and North Shore Coast Care. We've got some exciting projects that demonstrate how Council is managing our natural and built environments while supporting a strong economy and diverse communities now and into the future. The Environment and Livability Strategy guides planning, growing population and manages our response to climate change. It also aims to deliver a healthy, livable environment for local residents living in our Sunshine Coast biosphere. Friends of Karamani Lake was started in 1988 because of the multitude of weeds, the coming in of more people. There was no care taken about what was affecting the lake at the time because the lake is the pivotal point for this area. The lady that started it could see that there was going to be problems in the future if we didn't start doing something about the environment. We need the volunteers, but also this is our area. Like, we live here, so it's up to us to help look after it. I've been working for the last 14 years really in Glasshouse Country and community development, getting to know the, the ins and outs of, of this community. And with that, we really came to a great awareness that with climate change and the increasing disasters, that we need to think more seriously about how the community can equip itself for being more resilient in terms of um, future disasters. We know that there's going to be people who are new to the coast, so they might not necessarily understand what the disaster risks are. Such as on the Sunshine Coast, we get the severe storms, we have the bushfires, we have floods. Um, and other disasters, but those three particularly are quite pertinent to the Sunshine Coast. So understanding those, if we need to evacuate quickly, we're going to have a lot more people all at once needing to fill our roads to get out. So I consider that a major issue of needing to have good planning in place for how we can accommodate the extra population to the coast. Council's role in disaster management went up another gear, and with the region facing an increased threat from bushfires this summer, we introduced a world-leading tool to help identify hotspots in a matter of minutes, allowing for a swift response. Called XE, it acts like a smoke alarm for the bush, using a network of on-ground cameras and an AI-assisted program that scans satellite images to detect heat and smoke in a matter of minutes. The Sunshine Coast is experiencing significant housing affordability challenges and increased levels of homelessness. Council recognises the housing crisis is a situation that is difficult to quickly rectify. However, Council is helping to shape the future housing and homelessness response across the Sunshine Coast at a local level with the implementation of the Sunshine Coast Housing and Homelessness Action Plan. Our emergency accommodation services assist people who have been rough sleeping or homeless on the Sunshine Coast. We're able to assist people, both adults and young people who are experiencing homelessness. It's not just a bed to provide, we provide supports and wraparound services so we can look towards the future with them in a secure way. This year we have increased our supports in our accommodation services by opening the new church which is targeted at young people. 
We've also increased our outreach supports where we're seeing people that are rough sleeping on the Sunshine Coast and we're meeting with them. The demand for homelessness has increased and we've seen a lot of people that have never been homeless before uh, requiring supports. And although that is, is sad, we're there to support people in their time of need. The preparation of the All Abilities Action Plan 2024 to 28 towards a more inclusive Sunshine Coast for people with disability was also developed with people of lived experience of disability, their carers and support workers to improve access and inclusion for people with a disability across our region. The Sunshine Coast economy is striving forward with a clear plan for a new economy that sees the region on track to generate thousands of jobs over the next decade. Our Sunshine Coast Regional Economic Development Strategy will continue to drive an innovative, adaptive, resilient and climate ready economy. The four goals in the strategy, growing our economy, generating more high value employment, increasing exports and improving household incomes remain at the heart of our next five year implementation plan. Our new Maroochydore City Centre belongs to the Sunshine Coast community. Progress on the City Centre continued throughout the year and once completed will be the region's primary centre of commerce, technology, innovation, entertainment and of course inner city living. So I'm born and raised here on the Sunshine Coast and I've loved growing up in a region that gives you a bit of everything from the beach to the bush and the city when you need it. Um, in 2016, I became the youngest pilot to fly solo around the world in a single engine aircraft, which was really great and I enjoyed some amazing support from the local Sunshine Coast community. And since then, while I've lived and worked overseas and in other places in Australia, I've come back here and I'm now the general manager for Smartline Medical, uh, which is a local manufacturing company of medical equipment here on the Sunshine Coast. And we manufacture medical equipment for the sterile core of hospitals with a particular focus on the sterilisation departments and endoscopy. And we export currently to 25 countries around the world. The Sunshine Coast Council has been incredibly supportive of our work here at Smartline Medical, um, both in some of the community uh, forums and events that they run, uh, as well as the programs such as Manufacturing Excellence Forum that they support. It gives us tremendous support in our manufacturing objectives, but also with our export development as well. There's about 1,400 manufacturers in the Sunshine Coast local government area, which is, you know, it's a big deal. It's a, it's a really big contributor to the region. The manufacturing sector is also the largest contributor to exports in the region. It constitutes about 20% of total total exports in the region and the next closest exporter is around about 9% and I think it's either health or, or food and bev or something like that. So manufacturing, you know, is it's a big deal as, as far as the prosperity of our region is concerned in an ongoing sense. We do a lot of manufacturing for the construction industry. There's a company called Protector Aluminium, works out of Cunder Park and they provide all of the pool fences to Bunnings, aluminium and glass. About 130 people doing that, supplying it all over the country. It's really either nation leading or world leading leading stuff that we're providing on an international basis out of the Sunshine Coast um, and we should be really proud of that. Some of the reason why I was awarded Young Citizen of the Year for the Sunshine Coast was my work with predominantly Headspace and our Council. I do a lot of work in the youth mental health sector or mental health sector in general. Um, so I work with Headspace, I'm an ambassador for Headspace National and I also work with our uh, regional centre here down in Maroochydaw. The Rewired Youth Mental Health event was an event run by and led by youth. We struck some hearts in a in good positive light with creating more awareness for your own mental health and you know breaking down that stigma is a huge thing for us and I see that council's recognising that uh, really strongly at the moment is that we need to be able to create opportunity for the, the next generation that's going to be running this place. We need to be able to empower our young people here because we have such great opportunity and such great young minded people that we need to do everything that we can to be able to really enrich and upskill and knowledge these kids in what they're about to be taking on with life. I was a part of the uh, reference group that went down to the 2032 Legacy Forum, this is the Olympic Forum. It's really pushing towards the longevity of what comes after that, you know what I mean? What comes with uh, the economy and the business growth and the housing growth and all that kind of stuff and the sports growth and what can we do so that this Olympics is not just the Olympics and then it's over. It's also exciting that we have progressed planning for the delivery of three key pieces of Olympic and Paralympic Games infrastructure, an expanded Sunshine Coast Stadium, the new sports centre in Kiwana and a new mountain bike facility at Parklands. Once again, this has been another exciting and productive year for our Sunshine Coast. There have been so many highlights and achievements and we can be confident that we are striding towards an even brighter future. Council's vision to create the 65 hectare Sunshine Coast Ecological Park will deliver nature-based recreation, education and research whilst protecting, celebrating and restoring the site's inherent environmental, 
natural and cultural heritage values. Located adjacent to the Mary Can Cross Scenic Reserve, it will be a place of cherished nature and ecological wonder for generations to discover and enjoy. And it's exciting to see the community engaging with early projects implementing the Sunshine Coast Biosphere, such as the Kids in Action Biospheros program and the Biosphere Photographic Showcase. We're all part of the Biosphere and it's wonderful to see our community involved. As I said earlier, this will be my last State of the Region address and I want to thank all of my councillor colleagues who've supported my mayoralty since I was elected in 2012. Together we've achieved great things on behalf of our community. I'd also like to thank the many community members that have provided me with ongoing encouragement and confidence that I was on the right track and doing the right thing. I want to thank the staff of the Sunshine Coast Council who I've always felt had my back and were always eager to get in and support the projects that we were trying to deliver here in the Sunshine Coast. They can be very proud of the contribution they've made and indeed continue to make in our region. This is one of the best places in Australia to live and we've got an outstanding workforce here at Council and I thank them all very sincerely for their uh, great work and good wishes. Thank you.